Okay, hello everyone and welcome to episode five of IPNO from Home. We got me, we got John Rita, we got Rich Whitaker, and we have special guests, Lieutenant Colonel Javier Cortez from the U.S. Army slash Rutgers ROTC. Um, so what's up, Javier? Can you give us a little uh, background of what you do in the Army and what you do at Rutgers? Yeah, absolutely. So I started my career as an enlisted soldier. Um, I went through a program called OCS, Officer Commissioning, uh, where I became an officer. Um, I started off as an infantry officer. Uh, from there, I transferred over to be in logistics. And what I do now for the Army, I'm a logistics officer, logistician. Cool. Uh, what about at, at Rutgers? What's your involvement in the ROTC program? Yeah, so I'm the professor of military science. Um, we, we have what we call a, the battalion, the Scarlet Knight Battalion. We have about 120 cadets. Uh, we teach a military science course. I have a faculty of uh, four other uh, military instructors and an administrative faculty, about 11 in total, to include one Rutgers employee that works in our building. Um, so yeah, we, we teach military science. Um, last year, Rutgers University finally accredited uh, the military science as a minor. So it was a huge win for us and our 100 plus years of, of partnership with Rutgers University. Um, what was happening in the past is our student cadets, um, when they commissioned, they still had to find a minor. So some of them were commissioning with 120 plus credits. Now they don't have to worry about that. They'll just commission with a military science minor, 120 credits. And it's accredited, so it's a huge win for us and for our cadets. That's, nice. that's, that's awesome. great. Absolutely. So, um, you know, with the coronavirus pandemic and all classes at Rutgers being shifted to online, how has that affected the ROTC program? Because I've been to a couple of your guys' events, and, you know, it's all very, at least the ones I went to, they were, like, uh, you know, physical and in person. And I did one where, like... <laughs> Where like uh, we were all running in the woods and they were doing like a combat training. So how, how have you guys uh, adapted and shifted that to to remote? Learning? Yeah, that's, that, that's a great question, right? Like just like every American, right? It's been a challenging situation for everyone. And um, but I think Paul, the last time I saw you was when we were doing our army physical fitness test. I think it was yeah. like 15 degrees outside, and it was. I felt bad for you because it was so cold. And you were just kind of standing there with a the camera recording it. <laughs> I mean, it was it was one of the coldest days. Um, but yeah, I'll tell you. Um, I, I think the the day before Rutgers University uh, went to a minimum of 15 people per gathering. That was the original guidance we got. Uh, it was just so happened that we were doing our our urinalysis that day. So. Every academic year, all our cadets in our program, they, they at least twice, they're tested for, for any kind of illegal substances. Um, and that's for our, our graduating class, which is our MS4s, um, our seniors. It is a pre-commissioning requirement uh, for them to, um, to have a, a, a urinalysis and obviously they have to test negative for all the illegal stuff that's out there. And so it, we just happened to get it done. And uh, if we didn't get it done, it would have been a lot more challenging, right, with the restrictions by the governor and everything else. But um, what, it, what, I've, what I've found through this time is the tenacity, the resiliency of our student cadets. And I mean, just Rutgers University as a whole, you know, we, we kind of had to stop doing the, the physical training aspect of it, but we instead of using the WebEx platform, um, we, we use our GroupMe as a, as a network chat between the, the cadets and the cadre. Um, and I tell you, every week we, we kind of set up a thing where we have cadets post videos of workouts they're doing um yeah COVID-19 safe workouts right and every yeah. every day we get new 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 uh, workouts that somebody's doing and, and we send them workouts from the army's perspective or some of the things you need to do to stay fit uh, but cadets are getting creative right like we had one cadet doing pull-ups from a tree right because he doesn't have a pull-up bar in his house and <laughs> you know just yeah. other cadets doing exercises with their parents with their with their brothers sisters it's just fantastic the 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 creativity um and I think in times of um when people's um when things change, right? That's when people's true character comes out. And I tell you, the, yeah. the cadets that we have in our program, they've just shown that the the true character of, of 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 future army leaders of the military and just professionals and just just the things that the Rutgers University wants wants out of the program and people to represent them. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that if 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 any of like the student population would be, you know, ready or 
are like willing to like face something like this and succeed in it, it would be like those kids that do ROTC just because all like the discipline you have to have to do that. I, when I was in college, I had a roommate who did ROTC, you know, he had to like be out at six for six in the morning for PT. And I mean, yep. me, especially in college, I, there, <laughs> there was just no way you were getting me out <laughs> at six in the morning. So I'd imagine if any students could do it, it uh, it'd be them. No, I tell you, and, and that is one of the, the challenges, right? You, you, you guys understand, you know, they're, they're, they're going to school just like any other student in university, right? But they have additional stuff they got to do because they want to, they volunteer to do this program and to serve after they, after they graduate. So our, our, the cohort of our cadets, I said about 120, about, about when we commissioned them, uh, we commissioned about, about 20 every year, 20, between 20 and 25 every year. This year we're commissioning 25, um, I say it's about almost a 50-50 split between those that are going active duty and National Guard. And what that means is they're staying working in the state of New Jersey. They work for the governor of New Jersey. And um, and so with, so with all those all those challenges that they, they have to do, not just for the ROTC, but some of them already are in the military. So they have to do, go to work at, at their drill units on the weekends. Like you stated, they have to wake up early in the morning, four days a week. They have to be in formation, ready to go by 6.30. So they have to be at our battalion by 6.30. So a lot of them, you know, are get up between 5 and 4.30 in the morning, you know, do the hygiene and whatever they have to do and then are there and they're consistently. I mean, we have almost no discipline issues. Everybody's there almost every single day. And um, when I meet parents for the first time, because for our, for our freshmen, um, they, they do interviews and sometimes they bring their parents to come into the program. I tell you, the parents love it, right? Because I tell the parents every single day, myself or one of my cadre faculty members are going to see your son or daughter and making sure they're okay. They're going to make sure they're up early. And the kids, our, our cadets love it because it, it, it gives them a, a, a purpose every day to get up early and start the day off. So they get up early, do physical fitness, go, go take a shower and then go straight to class. And it just, it just rejuvenates their day opposed to someone that stays sleeping until 12 o'clock in the afternoon, wakes up kind of groggy and, you know, it's just that discipline. So it's fantastic, I think. For sure. So Javier, uh, we're starting to see signs where we're starting to, you know, maybe get it back to a little bit of normalcy, um, you know, slowly, but uh, yeah. slowly but surely we'll get there. What do you think will be the changes to uh, to the ROTC program going forward based on what's happened here? I'll tell you, it's been it's it's, it's still a lot of unknowns, right? All right. Like like I'll tell you, our 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 junior. Uh, cadets going into their senior year, they're supposed to go to a training event in the summer to Fort Knox, Kentucky, where it's a culminating event of all the things they've learned for the last three years. And there's some evaluations that take place. And those evaluations kind of determine how an impact of what, what job they're going to get once they commission. So this year, we're still figuring out what we're going to do with that training environment, you know, because they obviously with the restrictions, um, they can't travel. So we're still waiting for some feedback. But I think um, at the end of the day, you know, the, the, our, our nation still needs military leaders. And I don't think that's going to stop. Um, I think we're still going to, the, our command, um, United States Cadet Command and our battalion, 2nd Brigade, um, Colonel Toady, who's our, my brigade commander, they've, 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 been, they've, just, they've done so many things to try to make sure that cadets are not falling behind. Uh, that they, they have the same advantages of, of, of officers that came before them. Uh, so they, they've, they've waived some of the requirements um, they, they had to have happened. But we're still get, doing it, but just not doing it like on a, on a physical platform. But we're still doing it something more of a, on a virtual platform, just like everybody else in the university. Right? I'm sure like students, they are going to medical school or some of those, some of those, those things that had to be done hands on are, are now doing some kind of something online. So same way we're evolving in the military and every day based on guidances from the state or from the university, um, we're, we're just adopt, adapting. So from our perspective, we follow whatever Rutgers University tells us to do because we're, we're a tenant unit there. We're, so if your university says we're open, we're open. If they say we, we're not going to be open, then we're not going to have any cadets come into the, the campus. We're, I know, at, the, uh, at the end of the day, their safety and welfare is paramount with anything else. Great. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go just just a little bit off script, but, you know, you, you're yeah. 
part of this fully accredited minor now, right? Which means you've got a pretty decent course offering. Um, to this point, is there any courses that are sort of surrounding crisis management, something like this crisis response? And uh, if not, do you see that sort of working its way into the frame after you know a crisis like this? Wow, that's an excellent question. So we do have a, a class on um, on on what the the civilian authority and the military relations, because you know, as you know right now, in every state, right, you have your you have the National Guard who's supporting, and then you have the civil authority who are in, at the upfront and and kind of laying out the groundwork and kind of telling us how they want us to support. Uh, so we do talk about that, but yeah, I think in the future we might develop something to include, especially with with what we're seeing now, it's unprecedented, right? And we want to make sure that the future leaders have, if we ever encounter this again, we're more a little bit more pre- better prepared, I guess. This might be the best mm-hmm. word. Great. Yeah. But I tell you, just I want to highlight something about the military minor. Um, what we found is that we have now students that, bef- that you know, to, to be in the ROTC program does not mean that you're making a commitment to join the military. You can just be in the ROTC program to try it out, uh, figure out if it's for you, and you can leave any time. I think the, a misconception is that people think, I'm in the ROTC program, I've signed, an, I signed a contract, I'm in the military. It doesn't work like that at all. Um, we typically don't, don't contract someone until, until their junior year, uh, when they've been with us for about two years, and we want to give them an opportunity to figure out if this is really for them. Um, the other thing is that we found with a with a military minor being accredited, um, we've had a couple international students join the ROTC program. Uh, we have a student from Brazil and China, who you know they they can they can commission as officers, but they they're they're coming to class and the training is optional for them and the PT is optional, but they're coming every single day to training and PT. Wow. Um, and then we have a couple of students who don't want don't want to be in the military, but just want to get more information and are interested in the military science or just taking classes with us. And, you know, they're after they, they're done with their two years of, um, of military science, they'll just go on and do whatever their main major is with Rutgers. Great. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So in, in terms of the, you know, coronavirus response, like at large across, you know, the state, not just Rutgers, have you played any role in, in, uh, in the response? So personally, I have not because I'm a, I'm a Title 10 officer. I'm an active duty officer. Um, so the, the ones that are paying role are the Title 32, which are our National Guard uh, members. So we have, we have a lot of National Guard cadets in our program. Um, we have one cadet who's been activated to help support the state of New Jersey. Um, so she right now is, is currently working to help the COVID-19 response. And we have two cadets who are EMTs so that they, you know, they go to school and then they part-time EMTs. And since this started, they've been like just full-time EMT and, and, and responding to calls every single day. So those are the kind of things that motivate me, you know, just to see these young individuals who are doing something greater than themselves. And, but yeah, personally, we, we have not in our, and in, in as a Title 10 officer, um, the only thing I could do might be provide support, but not be involved with the state. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, all those like, uh, you know, people who are EMTs and then you see like the people who are who are graduating uh, medical school like a little early to be, you know, involved in it. That's like the most like inspiring thing to be, like, you know, just to, I don't know, to like not officially be ready, but like throwing yourself like right into the front line. No, yeah. absolutely. We have one cadet who's uh, graduating early tomorrow. She's a nurse. Uh, she. Her mother's a nurse. Her sister's an army nurse, and now she's graduating as a nurse tomorrow. We we did the same thing. We had to submit the grades a little early, but you know it's all for great cause, right? To get them out there in the front lines and to help fight this epidemic. So, yeah, this uh, yeah that's a great thing. So I absolutely agree with you. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you know in the in the last uh, part of our episode, we usually just kind of talk about what our routines have been like, you know, what have been like the challenges, what have been, you know, how we kind of been dealing with them. So, you know, you probably, you know, I'm guessing in the military before, you know, you have like such a strict uh, schedule, you know. Uh, so how, how has this like changed how you just operate in day to day life? Has it changed at all? Like what's uh, what's the new normal now? Yeah, I tell you, um, I still try to stick to the same schedule, wake up 
early. You know, I try to wake up at four thirty every day. Um, but what has changed is the days that I'm home. Right, I have four kids at the house, and I tell you, it, my days have become a lot longer because I'm doing work. <laughs> but at the same time, the kids want something, and you kind of help out. And my wife's a school teacher. Uh, she's an ESL school she's a teacher in Trenton, and she's working at the same time. And you know, we have kids from all over ages, right? We got a four, a seven, a nine, and a seventeen-year-old who will be coming to Rutgers the following year. Um, so huh. you know, you know, every day everybody has different curriculums, and my wife's trying to, you know, make sure they're they're still getting that education, and then she's also trying to teach her kids, and then I'm doing the same thing, teaching and 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 running our 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 program at Rutgers. So. It's become challenging, but I'm sure every single American family that you talk to has had to endure or is doing something in the similar as myself. But I, I think the most important thing um, is to stick to your routine. I think yeah. I think if you start getting too complacent, you know, and, you know, it's just, it's just it's just a spiral effect. I think um, yeah. sticking to a routine and doing the same things you did to the best of your ability are, are key. I tell you, what's challenging is like going to the grocery stores and things of that nature. Is that yeah. that to me has been more challenging than anything else um you know <laughs> sometimes i even i feel even more cautious of doing that than, than than the my four previous combat deployments that i've had you know it's just like because <laughs> at least i knew I, I mean, at least i knew i could protect myself but here's the unknown right you just yeah you just yeah. don't know yeah, yeah the grocery sure. store is pretty perilous right now yeah mm -hmm. i mean and I tell you who I'm really I'm I'm just I'm just so stunned is it's just like these young individuals who are the cashiers and the those individuals that yeah. go and work every day at the grocery store for you know yeah. let's be honest maybe minimum wage right and they're they're yeah. the ones who are keeping us alive and you know and I just yeah. every time I, I go to the grocery store I just always thank them and they you know they just kind of look at you strange sometimes and to me that those are the folks that deserve all the credit you know yeah, yeah definitely I agree I definitely agree. Yeah, I worked at a grocery store when I was 17, uh, and I, I could not imagine going in. Like, I feel like there's no way yeah. I, I would even do it, no. you know? Absolutely, and most of them just have, they don't have, like, really good masks, you know? They just have a, a whatever kind of mask, and it's just like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. All right, well, I think that wraps it up for episode five. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening, and uh, thank you, Javier, for coming on. Thank you, Javier. And Thank you. We'll, very much. Uh, we'll, we'll give you the last word if you want to say anything. Now, Paul, Richard, John, thank you for inviting me. It's fantastic. I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to highlight the Rutgers Army ROTC program. And I tell you, our program is all about our cadets. Uh, they're the ones who keep myself and my faculty going. They're, I tell you, like I told you earlier, their tenacity, you know, their resiliency, their, their grit and their American fighting spirit they have is it's, it's just outstanding. And, I, you know, I just want to highlight them because this, they're the reason why I'm here. And they're the, they're the reason why we, Rutgers has an ROTC program. And I thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time, your time or your busy schedules to, to have me on this program. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you.